Hello. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to calculate the mean solar time. Well, what do we mean by mean solar time? Let's think about this. When is it midday? Surely it's simple. When the sun is at the highest point in the sky. Well, this would be true if the sun appeared to move at the same speed through the sky every day, but it doesn't. Some days it's faster and some days it's slower. So this would cause a problem when trying to use the sun to tell the time. If it was fast, you'd be early everywhere. And if it was slow, you'd be late. So what do we do about this? Well, we use something called mean solar time, which is where the sun would be if it were appearing to travel at a constant speed throughout the sky. And it's this mean sun that we use to determine when mid midday is. And we call this the mean solar time. This is therefore important when using a sundial to tell the time. As if the sun is running fast or slow that day, you need to be able to correct for this to establish exactly what the mean solar time is. The sundial will not directly tell you this. The sundial will tell you the time from the actual sun in front of you, regardless of whether it's running fast or slow. And this time is called the apparent solar time. So let's consider these different scenarios. Here, the sun appears slow. This means that when the mean sun is at the highest point, a mean solar time of 12, the actual sun in the sky has not re reached the highest point. In this example, if you looked at a sundial at this location, it would tell you that the time is actually 11.54. And this is called the apparent solar time. To correct for this, you'd need to know the difference between the apparent solar time and the mean solar time which in this case is minus six minutes. It's a minus number because the sun is slow. And we call this value the equation of time for that day. In this next example, the apparent sun is fast. The actual sun has actually already reached the highest point and is on its journey back down to setting in the west. The mean solar time is 12 as this is when the mean sun would have reached the highest point. But in reality, a sundial will tell you that it's 12.04, as the sun has already passed the highest point. This is our apparent solar time. In this case, the equation of time will be plus four minutes, the difference between the two times. Note how it's positive now, as the sun is fast on this day. If we take these values and look at them together, you can see that it's easy to create an equation to work out the equation of time. It's the apparent solar time minus the mean solar time. Now, if you took all of the values for the equation of time and plotted them on a graph, you'd get something that looks like this. And this allows you to find the equation of time for any day and therefore you can correct your sundial reading to give you the correct time. So we can see that this example could have occurred on the 1st of May. As when the equation of time is plus four, it coincides with the 1st of May. Alternatively, any of these other dates. Looking at this graph, we can see when the sun is fast, the locations in green, when the equation of time is positive, and the times when it's slow, those in yellow. And also we can see in red the dates when the equation of time is zero. And it's on these dates that a sundial would tell you exactly the same time as your watch. So let's take a couple of look let's take a look at a couple of questions that use the equation of time to calculate the mean solar time. Here, the question states that a sundial in Manchester reads 12.04 on a day when the equation of time is plus five minutes. We need to calculate the mean solar time in Manchester. Well, we will use the equation, equation of time equals apparent solar time minus mean solar time, 
And the question tells us that the equation of time is plus five minutes. So this equals the apparent solar time minus the mean solar time. The apparent solar time is 12.04, as that's what the sundial is telling us. And then we just need to rearrange the equation to work out the mean solar time. So rearranging it gives us the mean solar time is 12.04 minus five minutes, which is 11.59. We can see that the sun was fast on this date. next question is a little trickier as we have to use the graph. It states that on October the 1st the sundial in Arbro 3 reads 1121 and we need to work out the mean solar time. Now here we need to calculate the equation of time. Usually on graphs like this they'll either choose the star, end or middle of the month as they're an estimation of this scale. So the 1st of October will be here going up to the line and then across we can see that on this date the equation of time is around about plus nine minutes. We can then substitute it into our equation. So the equation of time nine equals the apparent solar time, which is 1121, minus the mean solar time. Again, we need to rearrange it, and rearranging the equation shows the mean solar time is 1121 minus nine minutes, which means that the mean solar time on the 1st of October in our growth is 1112 at this time. So there we go. Now you're confident in calculating the mean solar time. Have a go at some of our key skills questions.